Welcome to my YouTube channel. As you continue to watch the video, please do not forget to subscribe and press the bell button. The act of learning is an art. It's every bit as important as you learn. If you're watching this video, I'm going to share skills that are hard to learn but will pay off forever. I'm very sure you've heard about this before. Go to school, get good grades, get a degree or a diploma, you'll be guaranteed success in life. But the truth is, the best things in life may be free, but without time, sweat, and perseverance, you won't see the results. You probably already recognize this too. Things have changed in this 21st century. Having a degree, a certification, or even a grad school diploma won't get you to where you want to be in life. I always tell this to the people around me. How you do anything is how you do everything. A mindset shift is challenge mostly consisting of passing all the hurdles to fulfill your desired outcome. You see, the right mindset, anything is possible. Successful mindset goes way beyond just being positive. It's a way of thinking about yourself, your goals, your future, and your daily actions. Now, let's talk about the skills that you needed. And number one is accountability. Accountability is a nebulous term. Accountability is a self-driven skill. One that made you feel good, feel accomplished, and without boundaries. Because when this skill is developed, you learn to trust yourself. You trust your own process of acquiring information, learning to apply that information to your job, and owning the results of your work. An accountable individual holds themselves accountable for their work before they even start it. Because accountability is an individual's own trust process a unique skill set developed within successful professionals, a skill they choose to apply to their jobs. Number two is consistency. You can argue that consistency is a trait and not a skill, and there are some aspects of it that are, but if you view consistency as always getting your work done before the deadline, volunteering for new projects, attending optional trainings, or being part of extracurricular activities like charity days, it becomes a skill that you can learn and become good at. It's a lot like developing a good habit. You need to assess how to balance all of this with new, more difficult work. You need to be learning to grow professionally, but you also need to understand your strengths and weaknesses so you aren't overwhelmed. The important thing about showing consistency is being consistent. Yes, you heard me right. It's a rule to live by. Number three is critical thinking. Critical thinking is a rich concept that has been developing throughout the past 2,500 years. The term critical thinking has its roots in the mid-late 20th century. Critical thinking is the intellectual discipline process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. In its exemplar form, it is based on universal intellectual values that transcend subject matter divisions, clarity, accuracy, precision, consistency, relevance, sound evidence, good reason, depth, breadth, and fairness. Critical thinking is self-guided self-disciplined thinking which attempts to reason at the highest level of quality in a fair-minded way. People think critically, consistently attempt to live rationally, reasonably, and empathically. They are keenly aware of the inherently flawed nature of human thinking when left unchecked. 
They strive to diminish the power of their egocentric and socio-centric tendencies. A well-cultivated critical thinker raises vital questions and problems, formulating them clearly and precisely, gathers and assesses relevant information, using abstract ideas to interpret it effectively, comes to well-reasoned conclusions and solutions, testing them against relevant criteria and standards, think open-mindedly with an alternative system of thought, recognizing and assessing as needed be. Their assumptions, implications, and practical consequences, and communicates effectively with others in figuring out solutions to complex problems. Critical thinking, in short, self-directed, self-disciplined, self-monitored, and self-corrected thinking. In presupposes assent to rigorous standards of excellence and mindful command of their use. It entails effective communication and problem-solving abilities and a commitment to overcome our negative egocentrism and sociocentrism. Number four is decision-making. Being able to effectively make decisions have a number of positive benefits for both yourself and your organization as a whole. Most people make numerous decisions every day, so knowing why decision-making is important and how to improve your decision-making process may improve your overall work productivity and satisfaction. Decision-making is often an integral part of a person. Even if you aren't in a leadership position, your ability to make decisions can still have a positive or negative impact on your life. Being able to effectively make good decisions can provide a number of benefits. Making good decisions can save your time and resources, cultivate and maintain the respect of others in the workplace, improve productivity, prevent mistakes and risk. The better you are at making decisions, the more success you can become. Number five is writing professionally. Writing is an ability that is needed throughout our areas of life, including the workplace. And yet, the concept of communicating through the written letter is often left by the wayside, underdeveloped and underappreciated. Often the thought of writing well is either too intimidating to be properly addressed or overlooked as a menial skill that has no measurable bearing on daily life. However, the truth is that writing is one of the most important skills we can possess and is well worth the effort to take time to develop. Writing professionally is a life skill for all. It doesn't matter if you're managing a warehouse, babysitting dogs, or building spaceships. The ability to write clear, concise, and relevant text is an ace in a hole for any professional. It can help impress hiring personnel as well as maintain your reputation within the company once you've started working. The important thing is to appreciate the impact that writing can have on any career. Then, take the time to develop your writing skills for the long term. Number six is learning a new language. Learning a new language is a wonderful benefit in a globalized world. It improves your memory. The more you use your brain to learn new skills, the more your brain's as a functions work. Learning a new language pushes your brain to get familiar with new grammar and vocabulary rules. It allows you to train your memory to remember new words, make connections between them, and use them in contextual situations. Multilingual people have the ability to switch between languages. Their ability to think in different languages and be able to communicate in more than one language helps them with multitasking. Fully immersing yourself in a language learning environment means not only learning the basics of that language, it means learning how to communicate in another language with your peers or participating in extracurricular activities in that specific language. Number seven is accepting compliments and criticisms. 
No one wants to hear that they've made a mistake or that they've not living up to their potential at work. But dealing with criticism is part of being professional. You are not infallible. And thinking that you're incapable of making mistakes will only hurt you, your job performance, and your reputation. In contrast, accepting constructive criticisms reveals an employee who listens, strives to improve, and has enough humility to recognize the areas that needs a bit of spit and polish. It's an essential skill unless it's your aim to come off as a stubborn know-it-all person who gets angry rather than listen to the advice of the important people around you. Stop taking it personally. Unless it's destructive criticism coming from a negative person or place. Critique isn't personal. You're not being singled out by management for no reason. Your superior simply saw a deficit in your performance, your leadership style, or a technique that you use. That doesn't mean that you're a terrible at everything you do or that your work record is full of mistakes. It just means there are a few things you need to improve. You won't get by in any professional environment unless you're open to accepting positive and negative criticism. If you're willing to accept praise, then you have to listen to your weaknesses. Accept both compliments and criticism. Allow both the sun and the rain for a flower to grow. Number eight is showing gratitude. There is a variety of things that can conjure positive feelings of appreciation or gratitude that may guide people towards meaning and better health. Cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good thing that comes to you and to give thanks continuously. Because all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in your gratitude. Gratitude disconnects us from toxic, negative emotion, and the ruminating that often accompanies them. It shifts our attention so that our focus is on positive emotions. Expressing gratitude helps us even if we don't explicitly share it with someone. The person is happier and more satisfied with life. A gratitude practice trains the brain to be more in tune with experiencing gratitude. Positive plus a positive equal more positives. Number nine, asking for help or advice. There are times in our lives when we feel completely powerless and helpless. Being in a state of need is not a place where anyone likes to be. But as stupid as it may be, we often feel too embarrassed, too shy, or too proud to ask for help. Asking for help is a strength, not a weakness. Admitting that you are struggling and needing someone's help to move forward is something that only people who are committed to their goals and care about themselves enough are willing to do. Only confident people can admit that they need help. Only strong people can expose vulnerability in order to improve their situation. Even the toughest man alive talks openly about the fact that great force lies in vulnerability. I know it's easier said than done. Trying to recover from a bad breakup, letting go of painful failure, loss of someone close, or feeling stuck in life can be extremely hard. But you have to realize that by sharing your vulnerability and revealing the parts that you are not proud of in front of other people, you are becoming stronger. You are accepting yourself enough to show the world that you are not perfect. You are showing the real you, not a person. Number 10. Staying present in a moment. According to study, we are not fully present almost 50% of our time. Instead, we either ruminate about the past or worry about the things that are not yet to come. This often leads to anxiety, frustration, or even pain in our daily lives. Each morning we wake up with a clear mind, but quickly seek distractions. Instead of being grateful for a new day and being fully present, most people grab their phones or mindlessly rush into their days. And as if, it's not enough. The majority of our thoughts 
are about problems and how things might go wrong. Even though the present moment is all we have, we often choose to live in the past or even in the future. Neither the past nor the future is of relevance if you can enjoy this very moment right now. The present moment is your biggest treasure in life and if it's what you should protect most. Once you manage to be in the present moment with all your thoughts and emotions, you, reala you realize how everything else loses importance. And that's the best thing about it is the magic of being present is available to you all the time. You can literally tap into the power of presence whenever and wherever you want. Learning to be present takes discipline, yet you'll soon experience the benefits. Being present is no magic, but neither it is a coincidence. It's rather the result of small, conscious activities that lead to a more clear, focused mind throughout our days. If you think about history, you will be depressed. If you think about the future, you will have anxiety. If you think about the present, you will be in peace.